Clark Gable and Carol Lombard. Carol Lombard had their honeymoon here. Yes, well, well documented. Wow. They did, and that, of course, was the glamour couple sure. from that era. But you know, when I talk about the, the funny stories, for some reason, it brought to mind a letter I got from a lady who said that she had been trying to get pregnant for nine years and tried everything and every fertility doctor in the world came here for one weekend with her husband and got pregnant. I didn't know what to do with that letter, but I thought that was great. I was going to ask if that was actually her husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, that speaks volumes for the romance of Ingleside Inn, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. But one of the things that created the bedtime stories that I wrote, and the story that everybody loved, is when I first opened here, an English lord by the name of Sir John checked in and rented my best villa for a year. And he came with his two Rolls Royces and his driver and his secretary. And for three or four or five months, I forgot which, he paraded around town. The Desert Sun wrote articles on him. Uh, he was a man 72 years old, very flamboyant, walked around on occasion in a velvet robe with a crown on his head. And the socialites in Palm Springs threw parties in his honor. And he was the greatest. Uh, end of the story is, he was a house painter from Detroit that was wanted in three states for foreign checks. It made the UP and the API wire services. It was a great story. And that's what created the bedtime stories, because people would walk in here, and everybody heard about the Sir John. And they would ask me to tell them the story. Well, I couldn't tell them the story. It would take 45 minutes. So I typed it up, and I, if you, and I had it copied over at Staples. And if you walked in here and said, I heard about Sir John, tell me the story. I handed you 25 pages. You had to read it. And that saved you a whole bunch of time. I sure did, and it created a book. And I told all the other funny stories around it of all my great experiences here. And there's been so many, you know, that it would, it, I could write volumes at this point. But well, I was just in your office, yes. and I saw a photograph. Uh, we recently lost Mr. Blackwell. Yes. And I saw a photograph of the two of you together. You look like you're really good friends in that picture. Blackwell was a very dear friend of mine. Spent a lot of time down here, and Blackwell did. I am very proud and honored to be the president of the local charity, the Angel of Crippled Children's Foundation. Uh, and Blackwell, any time I asked him to do a fashion show for me, or do an affair for me, he did it. Mm. He was a very dear friend of mine. He was a very dear man and quite a talented guy, I had to tell you. Incidentally, he wrote his biography, which I thought was the greatest title I ever heard. The title of his biography was From Rags to Bitches. <laughs> is that a great that. title? Yes. Yeah. And, and I have three of the original manuscripts before it actually got published that he signed to me. Mm. We were very dear friends. And my heart goes out to Spencer, his partner for many, many years. Uh, yeah, but Blackwell, along with, along with many other people, became a very good friend. Mm -hmm. And I saw pictures of Bob Hope and his wife having dinner here. Oh, yeah, we've had everybody here over the years. I mean, uh, I ran into uh, Patrick McNee's son yesterday. Patrick is, is uh, the Avenger, as you, as you may know. He was a very good customer here. Uh, David Hasselhoff. Schwarzenegger used to be here every month. As a matter of fact, I want to say about eight, nine months ago, it was a cute story, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning, and two black Hummers pull up in the driveway and 10 guys come out in suits and ties, and I happened to be on the veranda at the time. Nothing happening here. One couple in a restaurant from the hotel having breakfast on the patio. And I see these 10 guys, I thought maybe there's a drug bus going on. It's like FBI guys. And who gets out of one of the Hummers but Arnold Schwarzenegger? And he comes out and I said, Governor, what are you doing here? And he said, I want to show my friends my favorite place. And he takes these 10 guys into the courtyard, comes down to the restaurant, talks to this couple here. And uh, I said, well, what are you doing here? He said, I just spoke at a group, to a group in Indian Wells. I'm on the way back to the airport. And I just wanted to stop by to show my friends the place. I was so impressed. Of course, I called the Desert Sun and they printed it. Well, that Saturday night, I was sitting here with my wife and some friends and telling them the story about Schwarzenegger stopping in to show his crew the Ingleside Inn. And I take a look in the front, and Maria Shriver is there with the two daughters. And I get up and I say, I can't believe this. Arnold was here four days ago. She said, he told me. I came to show our girls our place. So, I mean, those kind of things. I call them ego strokes. I mean, 
God knows I've had more than my share of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we've been featured on Lifestyles of the Rich and, rich and Famous, and, and we've been on 60 Minutes, and, you know, I've gotten that's a lot more than my 15 minutes, I must tell you. Mm. I mean, I got so much publicity, I was sure I discovered the cure for cancer. <laughs> <laughs> well, the food, I hear, is absolutely incredible. Okay. Uh, I've heard that, too. To be with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The restaurant, it, the restaurant does a great job. I mean, it, it's, it's just a lovely restaurant. You know, it's from a... It's, you're coming at night, it's a different setting. It's candlelight, tuxedo, the way this table side cooking. Uh, the thing that I try to dispel is, you know, the cost of a meal is more of a perception than a reality. We serve, we offer a three-course dinner for $22 at Melvin's with a choice of four entrees. But when you come in and you see a tuxedo waiter and table side cooking and candlelight, you say, wow, that's expensive. I have a friend that runs the local cheesecake factory, and I go there quite frequently, and I'll eat just a plate there for $20. And every time I go there, I complain to my wife that for $22 at Melvin's, you get all this, including a super salad, and you spend. So I try to and discover. And you have the elegance to go along the with The elegance. It. And not only that, it's a full experience, because we have entertainment every night with dancing. We have a piano lounge, and as everybody knows today, the piano player with the synthesizer sounds like a full orchestra. Mm -hmm. So we can play anything you want. We get more young people today than we ever got before. And I ask them why they're here, and they say they want the authentic Hollywood glamour with the rat, rat pack coming out. So as a matter of fact, as evidence of that, believe it or not, Melvin's had to put up disco lights so that on a Friday or Saturday night when the young kids come in and they want to boogie, we play disco music here from 11, 11.30 on. Melvin's and the Ingleside Inn has never closed one day in 33 years. There has never been one day without entertainment in 33 years. It's quite a record. It's absolutely amazing. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable, yes. That's dedication. That's well, passion. Well, or greed. <laughs> it could be greed or one of those other things.